Happy Friday, everyone. Dan Ramos here of Ramos Stories. I'm on my roof right now. Memorizing lines for a show, and it's happening this Sunday at UCB Franklin called Filipino AF. AF stands for... Just search it. Um, one of them, Darren James, invited me to do a sketch with them, so... uh I'm excited. I'm on the roof right now, just memorizing lines. And, um, <laughs> dudes, I'm excited. For those who don't know what UCB is, go check it out. They have a whole history. Um, but my relationship with UCB and improv and sketch goes a long way. So I was born and raised in Montreal, Canada. And, uh, yeah, my parents would, you know, take us out to just for laughs. They would have like free street festival activities, you know, for families and friends to watch. And yeah, you know, we'd go on, uh, take a bus to 129 Conseil Catherine all the way down to. Old Montreal or Le Vieux Port. Not the old pork, the old port. <laughs> Le Vieux Port. That's kind of funny. <laughs> if you're from Montreal, you'll, you'll appreciate that joke even more. So yeah, you know, um, uh, Munch, uh, just for laughs back in the day had improv, I had tons of improv. They had this thing called theater sports. Um, so yeah, you know, we would just look at the free activities and stuff. And then when I got older, I, you know, um, I think the first Just for Laughs show I saw was with a friend named Myra, Myra Lou, Goat Bunny, check her Instagram out, amazing artist. She was the one that drew my Jolly Dan picture. <laughs> this is too much, too much ads, too much promo. But uh, I saw this thing with her. We we went to the medley. This is an old club back in Montreal. I believe this was 2000. Maybe 2001. Myra, remind me. So we met there. We never met. This was our, our first encounter from online presence to face to face. So Mar <laughs> Myra and I were on this website called Asian Avenue. <laughs> Her shit was called Myra Goat Bunny or something like that. Mine was, and I'm not lying, XX Timba Dan XX. And, um, yeah, I became, uh, you know, member of the week two times in a year. Um, I don't want to explain what Asian Avenue is. It was like Facebook, but for Asians. And of course you could join if you're not Asian. I'm not trying to exclude anyone from it. But at the time, it was Asian Avenue, MySpace. Um, it was also Black Planet. <laughs> My friend James Lee wanted me to join. James Lee isn't Asian. He's black. So he went on <laughs> Black Planet and he's like, Dan, I'm not getting any hits. No, one Yeah, because your last name is Lee, you bunghole. So he's like, can I join Asian Avenue? I'm like, no, don't. He joins it and then he gets like more followers than me. All right, that's fucked up. Anyway, I meet Myra at the medley and she's a, this weird punk Filipina chick, artist, artist since day one. And, um, we, I don't know, there's a long running bit or as if it's like, <laughs> if someone started shooting at us, you want to be running straight, right? You'd be running around in a swerve so that, <laughs> like in an S form, like a snake, so that the shooter, you know, would have bad aim. Anyway, uh, I don't know what I was signing up to with these Just for Laughs tickets. I just saw them, uh, just bought them, and uh, we go into the medley. And it's just two teams playing theater sports. And it was in English and French. And we had to, they gave us like a yes and a no. 
you know, like a thumbs up, thumbs down, um, poster or sign to hold so that, you know, if we like the team, we can give it a thumbs up. If we didn't like it, thumbs down. And I'm like looking from above or looking down. Sorry, that was uh, Batman and his motorcycle. So I'm looking down at the two improv teams just going at it. And I was like, what the frick is this? This is, this is all improvised. This is all made up. How are they? How are they like in their zone? Like this guy is a panda. This guy's a tree. This other person's a referee. No, there's a, there was an actual referee there. He, uh, you know. He was the one refereeing both teams. Anyway, that was my introduction to improv. Uh, that year, I get into Dawson in 2021. Uh, 2001. Get into this program called Cinema and Communications. As I'm there, uh, I, I, <laughs> my attempt to join the improv club was cut very short. So I didn't know anything about improv. I just felt it in my bones, you know. And, um, I go to the improv group meetup on a Friday, you know, and it's just, I meekly walk in into this, the wooden part. It's like Dawson College in Montreal had this like wooden place, a wooden hangout. And, um, yeah, I go in and it's just all, you know, uh, eight white kids already just jumping around and doing their thing. And, you know, I'm just like trying to be like, okay, okay. Someone invites me to, you know, join them and we do a thing called zip, zip, zap, zop. And I'm like, okay, I like this, you know, and then we, and then we're passing around energy, you know, someone claps at me and I got to mimic them and blah, blah, blah. I've never taken any improv classes. I'm just like, all right, let me feel it. Let me feel it. And then the leader, um, I don't know who he was. He was white. That's all I knew. Uh, you know, uh, told us all to sit down. We, um, and then he's like, all right, you know, pick a subject. And then he picked me. It was him and a couple of other folks. We did a scene. And, um, I, I don't know. I, I thought I was doing okay, but, you know, obviously I wasn't jamming with them. And, uh, uh, the scene ended abruptly. And then, you know, they wiped the stage clean as, you know, they reset it and then a whole new team came up. And then I don't think I, um, for the rest of the hour, I don't think I went up anymore. I just sat down and just watch the pros do their thing. And, um, you know, as soon as the jam ended, uh, I, you know, no one really, yeah, no one really, made me feel welcome afterwards so I just I don't know I just walked away and yeah that was it for me in improv in Montreal <laughs> so as you could understand you know so two years later I moved to Toronto so right after I graduated from Dawson College, from Cinema Communications, I moved to Toronto, and I'm at Ryerson University. You could check it out. It's now uh, extinct, or they changed it, changed the name. It's the Toronto Metropolitan University or something. So I joined this... No, I, I got into radio and television arts... Four-year program. I moved from Montreal to Toronto. It's a whole new city. And I'm like, wait, 
City, Toronto, Scat, Improv, Second City. I, I, you know, like, every time I heard improv, it just made me angry. <laughs> I swear. It just triggered me back to that time back at Dawson. And then I remember the first time I went to Second City, saw the building from the outside. Someone explained to me what their deal was. I was looking at the curriculum. And I'm like, can I balance this while going to school? I'm like, hells yeah. Hells yeah, I'm not going to let that one experience at in Montreal ruin, you know. So yeah, my first year of university in, uh, in Toronto is also the same first year I joined Second City. And I do, you know, levels 101 all the way to the graduating level. Um, took me a couple of years. Uh, <laughs> You know, you, you, you wouldn't take all the levels all at once, right? Oh my God. I remember now I lived in Marvin's basement, my cousin Marvin's basement. I would take the train all the way down to Chinatown from Spadina station. Oh my God. A second city. I met a couple of amazing folks there. This guy named Daniel Stolfi. I think it was the 201. Yeah, I think it was 201 on my second year of university, and then that's when I hired him to be part of my short film called Scoopers. It's a mockumentary about the life of three ice cream scoopers. Daniel Stilfe, check him out. He's a star. And, uh, yeah, Second City, you know, um, taught me the ins and outs of improv. Oh, who's was one of my teachers. No, Brian Smith. <laughs> Brian Smith, you were my first teacher. And the second one, Paul Constable. Dude, Paul Constable. This guy booked every single Canadian Tire commercial, any Tim Horns commercial. He was the dad. <laughs> Paul Constable, if you're listening to me or listening to this, shout outs to you. Thank you, Brian Smith, you too. Um, Second City Improv. While I was there, I joined a sketch troupe called the Midnight Review and met Chantal Rene. Love this. Love this lady. Chantal Renee, if you check her out, owns a prop store in Toronto. If you want to rent out anything for your projects, go check her out. Chantal. She was my partner in crime. <laughs> From the midnight review to touch my stereotype to doing shows in New York. And I believe she was the one to introduce me to UCB. She's like, yeah, you don't know what UCB is? You got to take their intensives. I'm like, what? Chantal would go down to Chicago to do Second City intensives. And, um, you know, she's like, UCB is another improv happening down in the U.S. I'm like, what? I thought Second City was top dog. No. <laughs> we go down to Second City. We, I think I see a midnight show and a Herald. And I'm just like, holy moly macaroni. I'm looking at the headshots of all the teams, you know, the mod teams, the Herald teams. And I see this Filipino dude. I'm like, what the fuck is this guy? What's this guy's face? I'm looking at the name Eugene. Cordero in instantly in my mind memorized and just ingrained. I'm like, this guy does improv. This guy's the sketch. I can't believe it. What the heck? So from 2009, I was just introduced to UCB and, you know, it blew my mind. Um, 
Because I thought Second City was it. So years later, I ended up moving to New York in 2012. And because I'm Filipino and Canadian. Hello, using me diversity. Um, I think I got the scholarship three times. Yo, it helped so much. I did some Sashir Zamata's and Sharla Lorston's school night show. Love them. They, oh my God. They saw me. They saw my talent booked. Fucking, you don't understand. Like, you see me, Chelsea? <laughs> Waiting in line with a bunch of other stinky, sweaty people. Even in the wintertime, it's sweaty because everyone's all like cuddled up together because, you know, you don't want to block the the grocery store and like, you know, people's homes. People live like, oh, it's so funny. The magic of UCB. R.I.P. Chelsea. Oh, my God. Just going down the stairs. You can just feel the, you can smell it. I remember taking UCB classes and the mandatory, you know, you got to go watch a show. I'm like, fuck, yeah, you got to watch a show. You know, sometimes people don't do the minimum requirement. We'll come back to a class. Did anyone see any shows? People say no. I'm like, how can you not? This is free. Oh, the little UCB punch cards. Remember that? Or was it punch cards or the whatever? I think I'm just blabbering right now. Okay, UCB, UCB, New York. Oh, right. So while I was living in New York, uh, my friend Nikki San Pedro, shout outs to her. She invites me to New, uh, to LA and we go see the show. It's Dead, Dead Poet Society or reading with Paul F. Tompkins. And I think that was the first time I saw the Franklin stage. And I was, <laughs> oh, Mama Cena. Everyone lining up in front of the UCB building on Franklin, in front of the Scientology building. <laughs> and it was a happening. Like, man, I remember just sitting there at the top left corner. Oh, wait, no. They... <gasps> wait. Oh, wait, was it the same stage? Yes, it was. Maybe just a little slightly renovated. But I remember it being so stinky packed. Like, even audience members would sit on stage. And Paul Tompkins and friends would just, like, art it up. And, uh... You know, I, I don't know if you're, you guys are performers or anything like that, but there are certain stages that you just want to, you know. And I don't remember telling myself, Dan, if you ever do get up on the stage, you're not going to be, I don't know, doing an improv jam or anything it, it, or stand up. It has to be something meaningful. <laughs> Or something, whatever. So, this was 2009. I fly back to New York, and in 2016, I moved to LA. And um, yeah, you know, uh, I realized that there was a UCB here, but I, you know, couldn't afford any of the classes, and I felt like I've already put in my time and effort into. The UCB community in New York. I'm like, who am I to start all over here in LA? And so I just, you know, hit the, the jams, uh, when it was at the <laughs> Inner Sanctum. They had an open mic night there. Um, and then I believe in 2017, Asian AF and Filipino AF popped up. And let me tell you, <laughs> brought tears to my eyes even thinking about it 
Like, do you understand how much joy it gives me to see a bunch of Filipinos doing, like, straight up amazing improv and sketch and being so, like, real to their characters? I'm like, what the fuck is this? This is, like, the cream of the crop. And I envied. Oh, my God, I envied. Of course I wanted to perform there. Of course I wanted to be on stage and jam with them. But I was like, who am I? No, no, no. Dan, just be there. Sit down, clap, laugh, take pictures, share, be supportive, and introduce yourself um, to them at the end of the show. And that's what I did. Um, Befriended a couple of people. I, you know, saw a couple of... Other Filipinos in the commercial audition saw PJ McCormack, I think, at a Best Buy audition. <laughs> I believe it was with the SAG after. I saw Daryl James. Um, I think it was for a Nickelodeon voiceover. Uh, who else? Just Gilbert Galan. This was on the Sony lot. I remember walking in. And he's already shaking his head. <laughs> he's like, Ramos, what are you doing here? I'm like, what are you doing here? So, like, I remember for, like, I think six months, six or seven months, I would just watch the show. I didn't even ask to be on. I was just like, yeah, you know, I'm just here. Yeah, I do stand up, you know, I do my thing. I didn't have a sketch group. I didn't have a improv uh, team that I could jam with. No, I was like a solo dude. And then one day they asked me to do stand up. And I said, yes, it was uh, an amazing show. It, was on, uh, it took place in October. Grace Moss was the monologist. Grace Moss works at NBC. Check her out. And luckily enough, I, she listened to my stand up, which, uh, then led to a meeting with her. And, um, yeah, and this, uh, Sunday, I'm going to be performing with, Daryl and the Filipinos fuck crew up uh, at the UCB Franklin stage. Uh, that's why I'm on the roof memorizing my lines right now. As you can hear. Uh, listen, man, if you think improv is corny, good for you. Good. Be close-minded. <laughs> and just don't care but if you really want to see good improv come to the show this sunday come watch like (laughs) for some reason every show just tops itself one time joe coy popped in in nowhere i remember i'm gonna tell you this story i'm gonna tell you this story (laughs) Uh, this was right uh, a couple of months after they asked me, or uh, I think a year later. Um, they asked me to do improv with them. And I'm like, holy moly, amazing. And my cousin, um, let's call him Marvin. <laughs> he was with his, um, whatever. X now, but so I'm like, yo, dudes, uh, I got a show at UCB. You should come. It's always sold out. It's like, you know, 300 Filipinos and, you know, they're like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're, you know, we're going to come. I'm like, yeah, okay. So we go shopping. We go to two Mark Jacob stores. Mark Jacob stores. They fly in from. Canada to go to LA to shop Mark Jacob and now they're t- okay so I'm like okay yeah the show is like in a couple of hours and then 
they drop me home and I'm like, yo, so, uh, yeah, you guys got to come out to the show. And then they're like, oh, no, no, we're resting up right now. And as they're saying that, I'm getting like a message on my phone, but I'm not looking at that message. And I'm like, are you sure? They're like, yeah, yeah, don't worry. And I'm like, I mean, this is a Filipino only show with Filipino talent and like yeah don't worry don't worry i'm like okay okay rest up rest up they drop me home they go back to the hotel and they rest up for the night because they're tired so that night at ucb joe coy pops out of nowhere and he watches everyone set he freaking takes pictures with everyone he does a set you know, he gives a couple of words and saying, you know, how important it is for this show to thrive every single month. And, you know, I remember during the pandemic, they were still doing it. Zoom, Zoom shows and all that, too. So, um, yeah, don't miss out on this show. It's this Sunday. Get your tickets. Uh, I'm also performing at the Elysian Theater for Ron Lynch's Tomorrow Show. That's at midnight, if anyone really wants to check that out, too. So it's a Ramos weekend. I'm going to go back to memorizing my lines. Thank you for uh, listening to Ramos Stories. UCB, the second city in Toronto, the second city in Hollywood, UCB in LA, UCB in New York. Uh, the Pit Theater, the Tank Theater, what else? Gotham Comedy Club. Yo, all you guys, thank you. Um, yeah.